afternoon, everyone. We'll just give it one more minute and then we'll start. Good afternoon everyone and welcome to using symbol software to make a communication book. I'm going to introduce Sarah Alderman who is going to lead the webinar this afternoon. Sarah is a specialist speech and language therapist and she works on behalf of High Furlong Special School. Afternoon Sarah and thank you for this. Hi Erica, thank you. Okay, let's get started. OK, so our topic today is using symbol software to make a communication book. So we're going to think about all the different types of communication book and look at some of the symbol based software that you might use to make a communication book. So today is a little bit of an introduction. We're not going to cover things like implementing the communication book. Um, and if you hear about a communication book today and you want to know a little bit more about a certain style, do let us know and we can hopefully point you in the direction of more training that's a little bit more specific to the area you're interested in. So as Erica said, uh, my name is Sarah Alderman and I am a specialist speech and language therapist. Um, I've worked in special needs settings for around 12 years now um, and my specific area of interest is supporting students who have limited verbal communication skills. Uh, so those are students who use some alternative form of communication uh, that might be an electronic communication aid or it might be a communication book. So I spend quite a lot of my time making communication books, adapting communication books, updating them and then implementing them as well. So this webinar really is just covering some of the, the skills I've learned along the way and hopefully a few tips about how to make a communication book um, and to make it effective for the user. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, just before we get to the actual webinar, uh, a little bit about us uh, and where these webinars are coming from. So we are part of the EdTech Demonstrator Consortium and we're made up of three schools. So there's High Furlong, there's Ribblesdale and there's Hambleton School. And together the three of us are supporting schools with uh, using technology to support teaching and learning. Uh, it's a free scheme, so if you work in a school and you are interested in having some support, uh, on the final slide today there's a link and you can sign up. Uh, at High Furlong we're specifically focusing on things like assistive technology and communication aids. So if you would like support with that, do let us know and we will help you as best as we can. OK, so these are the things that we are hoping to cover today in the webinar. Um, so we'll start with why you might use a communication book and the basics of what a communication book is. Uh, we'll look at the different types of communication book available. So there are lots and lots of different types of communication books, but we'll touch on the, the ones that are used most frequently. Um, assessment for using a communication book. We'll have a little look at what's involved in the process of selecting a communication book thinking about the layout, the navigation, and how many symbols you might have on a page. We'll then look at using templates from symbol software. Uh, so we'll look at Board Maker, uh, Matrix Maker, and Widget, and some of the, the templates that might be available on there. And then finally, we'll have a little look at adapting communication books for a range of access methods. Uh, so you can see in the, the picture, we have a young girl who is pointing with her finger to the symbols on the page. Uh, but many of the children who I work with don't have that direct access. They struggle with their fine motor skills. So they might fist point, they might eye point, and we have to adapt the communication books to meet their access need. So we'll have a little look at that towards the end of today's webinar as well. Okay, we'll start with the very basics. What is a communication book? So basically a communication book provides pages of systematically organized symbols, usually arranged by topic and different elements of language and conversation are included within the pages. So different styles of communication books approach this in different ways. So some take a very conversational social approach. 
Some are more based on language and thinking about sentence construction. Um, and that's why the whole assessment process is really important as it's it's looking at the child as an individual and the, the type of communication book that will best suit their needs. A communication book is generally used with an adult or child who has unclear speech or limited verbal communication. So it might be their primary means of communication. Uh, the communication book might be their sole form of communication. Uh, generally, it's part of a total communication approach. So the child might use gestures, they might use vocalizations uh, and their communication book alongside that. Of course, then you might have other children who use an electronic communication aid and also have a paper based communication book as well. And we'll talk about why that's important in a little bit. A communication book is also a really useful tool for someone who has unclear speech. So um, in context, you might be able to understand their message or a familiar listener might be able to understand what they're saying. Um, but a communication book is a great way to back up what they're saying, particularly particularly if they're talking to an unfamiliar listener. Um, I also use a communication book with a young girl who typically communicates using single words or short phrases. But when she has the communication book, she can produce longer sentences. She can have more of a conversation because the communication book is providing her with visual cues and prompts and how it's organized is also supporting that conversation. Uh, so it's a really useful tool for lots of different people. Uh, communication books can involve symbols or text or photographs uh, or a combination of all of those elements. Uh, today's webinar, we're mainly focusing on symbols as we are talking about using symbol based software as well. Uh, so symbols are basically um, a pictorial way of representing a word um, and they're really useful for children who maybe have difficulties with literacy. Um, but also they're almost a language in their own right. So um, it might be a quicker and easier way for a child to communicate using symbols rather than just text alone. Um, so yes, symbols are really important. Uh, so I thought we'd start by addressing a question that I often get asked. Uh, why would you use a communication book instead of a high tech communication aid? Uh, now I've put high tech in inverted commas here because we're trying to move away from this terminology um, as I think sometimes when we talk about low tech being a communication book and high tech being an iPad or a communication aid, it almost sounds like there's a hierarchy and that the ultimate goal is to use a communication aid like an iPad. But actually, every communication method is valid and each of them have their own purposes. Um, so for many of the children who I work with, a communication book is a really effective standalone method of communication um, and that's enough for them. Um, and then other children who I work with will have both a communication book and an electronic communication aid. Um, and again, I feel it's really important to have both. Some of the reasons why it's important to have both I've just listed here. So obviously it's important to have multiple means of communication available for different purposes. Um, we find sometimes in school, obviously our students are in different positions throughout the day. Um, so a child might be in a standing frame, they might be in a side liar, uh, and accessing their communication aid, like an iPad or designated communication aid might be quite tricky. Um, so having a paper based book is a little bit more flexible and generally a little bit easier to access. We also find um, when our children are tired or distressed, sometimes the um, use of an electronic communication aid is adding a bit of extra cognitive load in that they have to make sure they're hitting the right button. When you're frustrated, you're more likely to miss hit and then you're going to get even more frustrated in turn. Uh, so having a paper based book or even a simple board is quite useful when a child is feeling quite tired or maybe a little bit distressed or upset. A communication book is really useful when you're outdoors. So one of the drawbacks of a communication aid is when you go outside in the sun, there is glare on the screen. Um, they are developing communication aids now that uh, don't have that glare, so that's an exciting development, but a communication book is really useful currently to take out and about as you're not going to have that same glare and it's easy to see and access. 
The problem about electronic communication aids is that they do run out of battery um, and they occasionally have technical faults. Uh, the worst thing for me is when I'm having a conversation with a child and then the device decides to do an update, which takes about half an hour. Uh, so obviously having a communication book is vital for those times when the child actually can't access the device. And that's why I would always suggest having both a paper based and an electronic communication aid. Uh, this young boy here is quite a good example of this point. So in the bottom picture here, you can see he's using a pod book which we'll talk a little bit about in a minute. Um, and this is what he started with. So initially, something like an iPad wouldn't have been appropriate for him as he was a little bit obsessed with the iPad and he just wanted to press the buttons. Whereas when we used a communication book, he would point to the symbol and he would look up at me. He understood that it was two-way communication. And actually he learned lots of really important skills through using the communication book. Um, he would point to, he would vocalize first to gain my attention, and then he would point to a symbol in the book. So he learned really important skills such as initiation and looking up to involve the communication partner in his communication. Now in the top picture here, he's a little bit older and he's also using uh, an iPad, which has an app called Supercore 30. Just because we're using the electronic communication aid, it doesn't mean we've abandoned the pod book. Uh, he still uses both depending on the situation, depending on how he's feeling. Um, the pod book is something he's so familiar with that he often returns to it, especially when he's feeling tired or having a bit of an off day. Uh, so both methods are equally valid and equally important for him. As I mentioned before, there are lots of different types of communication book. Um, and we're going to explore some of the most common types of communication book uh, that I use or have come across um, in the next few slides. But just before we do, I thought we'd talk about some of the points to consider when you're thinking which type of communication book would be most appropriate for which child. So with a communication book, it's not one size fits all. So I have visited schools before where they've made tons and tons of one type of communication book and they start to give them out to lots of different kids. Um, and while that's good and that they're promoting communication, every child is completely different and how they will respond to that communication book will be different. So the assessment process is important. These are just a few points to consider. Um, can the child initiate communication? So um, if they struggle with initiation of communication and that two way process, it might be that something like PEX, Picture Exchange Communication System, might be a more appropriate starting point for them. And that doesn't mean that we won't progress to using a communication book um, or that PEX would continue to be their primary means of communication. Uh, it just very much depends on the individual child. We need to consider what motivates the child to communicate. Um, and again, different communication books will look at this in different ways. So, for example, the pod book that we'll look at in a few page, in a few slides time uh, has a lot of play based pages for younger children and can be a really beneficial starting point. How many symbols can the child cope with on a page? So you can see in the picture here, the young lady that I'm working with has loads of symbols. She has probably between maybe 50 to 75 uh, on the binder that she's using and she very competently can navigate through that whereas other children might uh, need a much simpler layout um, with less symbols on a page and that very much depends on their cognitive skills, their visual skills, uh, whereabouts they are in terms of learning to use the communication book as we don't tend to jump in with a really busy communication book. It's generally a little bit of a process which layout is easiest for them to navigate. Uh, so communication books always have some kind of an index page which directs you to different sections of the book, different topics, uh, different conversational elements. Um, and it's important to consider how the child will navigate through that communication book. And then finally, something that we'll talk about later in the webinar, physical access to the communication book so if the child struggles with their fine motor skills, we might need to look at an alternative access to the communication book and we'll need to edit it to meet those uh, access needs. 
So we'll start by looking at some of the most common types of communication books that are available or that I have used uh, with some of the students who I work with. Uh, the first is a really nice resource from the ACE Centre. Um, I would really recommend looking on their website as there's lots of brilliant information around AAC and alternative forms of communication there. Uh, so the ACE Centre have produced a little document called Making and Using a Communication Book, and you can see it here in the picture. So this not only gives you an example of a communication book and templates for a communication book, but it also talks you through the process of implementing using that communication book. Um, it also has a bottom up approach in that it has five stages. So you start with quite a simple stage where you'll only have a very limited amount of symbols on the page and then you'll move through the stages where vocabulary and navigate navigation gradually increases and becomes a little bit more difficult. The topics are generally appropriate to the age and stage of the child as well. So you can see uh, the example here. I think this is stage four of the communication book. Um, we have on the left hand page um, core words. So core words are the really, really important words that we use again and again in a conversation. Uh, they're basically the building blocks of our conversation um, and they're the words that we use probably most frequently throughout the day. So the thing about the ACE Centre communication book is that you will generally have consistent core vocabulary on your left hand page. And then on the right hand page, you'll have what we refer to as fringe vocabulary. So this is more topic based vocabulary. Um, and you can see here, this is like a cookery page. Um, they have the verbs here in green, so our action words. And then the following column is describing words. So things like tasty, hot, cold. And then the last two columns are nouns or objects. So things related to cookery like bowl, sugar, egg. So that very consistent layout is really useful uh, to think about when you're making a communication book. Uh, a lot of our children maybe don't even think about the symbol, but they might think about the motor plan. So where the symbol is positioned on the page. So, for example, if they were on the cookery page, they won't need to hunt for the word more. They'll know exactly where it is because it's always on the same spot. It's always the third one down on the left hand page, uh, which makes it much more easy to access. So the focus is on building and developing that core vocabulary. The nice thing about this is there are also free templates available. So even if you don't buy the Making and Using a Communication book, book um, there are templates that you can use. And I've provided a little link here. I've just noticed that you can't click it, but I'll try and fix that before we send out the webinar slides to you tomorrow. Um, so basically, when you click on that uh, link, it will take you to the ACE Centre website and you can download some of the templates for each of the five stages. Uh, the really nice thing about that is that you can open them in whatever symbol based software you're using. So if you use Boardmaker, if you use um, Widget and all the other different types of symbol based software, um, you should be able to open the files within that software that you are familiar with and then edit them, edit them quite quickly and easily. Let's talk about pod books. Um, so pod is a whole system in itself. And if you're interested in pod, I would definitely recommend that you go and do a little bit further training and research around pod as it really is a whole communication system. Uh, and I'm just going to touch on it very briefly today. I have to say I love pod. It works really well for some of the, the students that um, I work with um, and it can be a really, really effective means of communication. So pod stands for Pragmatic Organization Dynamic Display. And that's why we call it pod, because that's a bit of a mouthful. Um, basically, what that means is that it's organized in terms of social communication. So it's really thinking about a typical conversation. Uh, dynamic display means that the pages will turn and move throughout that interaction. So you'll find that you are frequently flipping pages within one conversation because you might want to comment on something. You might want to talk about actions. You might want to choose an activity. So you're frequently flipping between pages. Um, it provides a robust, full vocabulary. People often comment that pod books are massive. And they really are, but that's because they basically have everything that you can think of that you might want to communicate about. 
the focus is on two-way social communication. Um, so the communication partner also uses the communication book in the interaction. And that's a really important element of using any communication book, uh, is that you're modeling and providing examples of how you would use the book. Generally with the pod approach, the communication partner turns the pages to support navigation. So if you look at the picture here, you'll see that, for example, uh, there are color coded uh, cells. So this is our people page and it's uh, bordered in orange and then it has number nine in the top corner. And then you can see we have tabs at the bottom here. So the communication partner would flip to the tab once a child has pointed to the page that they want to turn to. POD is organised in a way that the child can talk about things conversationally. And this is one of the reasons I really like POD. Um, so you can think about tenses. You can talk about what you did last night versus what you want to do later in the day, which can be quite confusing sometimes using a traditional communication book. If the child points to iPad, are they saying they want the iPad now? Are they saying they played on the iPad last night? Are they saying that they want to play on the iPad after school? Uh, whereas POD, really gives you that context. It also lets you think about things like pretend play, so it's really nice for uh, using with early years. There are different stages and layouts depending on the child's needs and the child's age. Uh, so you do have the preschool pods and then you have older pods uh, for different age groups and there are different layouts as well. So I have only ever used pod on Boardmaker and I think that's really where you access the templates for pod. So currently at uh, Boardmaker Online, you can access pod templates by searching uh, lots of different pre-made resources. Boardmaker Online are about to switch to Boardmaker 7. Um, so if you use Boardmaker or you're interested in using Boardmaker, I would suggest you maybe jump on one of the webinars that they're running at the minute about switching to Boardmaker 7, as I believe there are going to be lots of more features and lots more focus on using things like pod and making pod. Uh, but currently um, you can search for pre-made templates and you can edit those uh, of all the different layouts for pod. So you can make bespoke communication books and I thought I'd show you a few examples of uh, some bespoke communication books. The reason why you might make a completely different communication book from scratch varies. Um, I would tend to do this if the child is already already familiar with a certain system and is using it quite effectively to communicate, but they need something more formal. So, for example, uh, you can see this photograph towards the, the right of the screen. This is a communication book that I made for a young boy who was really familiar with colourful semantics and he used it quite effectively in the classroom. So colourful semantics is a system about building a sentence. Um, and each part of the sentence is color coded. Um, but with this communication book, we wanted to add some core words in. So uh, I added a little cover page with some of those really important core words. So he could constantly flip back to those, but still use the elements of colorful semantics that he was familiar with uh, within the pages of the book. And that worked really well for him as it was taking on board something he already knew and was familiar with, but it was a little bit more of a formal communication system for him. Um, the bottom one here, this is just to provide an example of, uh, let's say you have a child who uses an electronic communication aid like an iPad with a communication app, but you want them to have a paper-based backup. Um, so this is Supercore 30. So a few slides ago, you saw the young boy using Supercore on his iPad. Um, now, if I wanted him to have exactly the same in terms of a paper-based communication book, I could order this from Smartbox and I could edit it to meet his needs and personalize it. Uh, and that way he would have exactly the same on his iPad and in his communication book. It just so happens that he's very familiar with POD, so using both systems isn't really an issue for him at the moment. Um, but in other cases, it's certainly nice to, to replicate what they might be using in terms of software in the paper-based form. You can also screenshot um, what the child's using on their communication aid and put that together as a book, but it can be a bit of a time-consuming process. 
the top one is quite a nice example and this just shows how you can use really quite a lot of core words within a communication book and this is really thinking about sentence construction and sentence building and again this is based on uh, I think it's word power uh, on the touch chat app on the iPad but in a communication book form the thing I like about this one is the core words are actually the bottom page of the book and then the fringe words so our topic words they are just flipped through at the top uh, so the focus is really on using that bottom page to communicate across lots of different settings and then if you need additional vocabulary you can flip to the right page so you can see this is a drinks and uh, possibly snacks page uh, that they have flicked to. So obviously I have shown you quite a range of different communication books, but that's only a small example of some of the books that you can make uh, as there are lots and lots of different types. So you might be scratching your head and thinking, well, how would I choose which communication book would be appropriate for which child? Um, so I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about the assessment process. If you are working on making a communication book, I would try to liaise with the team around the child first. That's really the main starting point, particularly the speech and language therapist um, who should have done assessments, which then will help inform uh, how that communication book looks. The child's family are obviously really important to get on board as they're going to be using the book at home. So you want to involve them in the very early stages of the process. And also they can provide you with lots of great information around what motivates a child. Uh, so for example, you can see here, this young girl, um, she's using a really, really simple communication book. We're hoping to build to something a little bit more complex eventually. So she has core words on the top and then each page has um, a different topic. And her mum provided me with lots of information about things that motivate her. So these are her TV choices and things that she really, really likes. You can see she's pointing to Mr. Tumble. Um, it's important to uh, liaise with education staff as well. Just a little aside here. Um, be careful not to fill the communication book with too much topic vocabulary, so education topic. So, for example, a teacher might say to me, oh, we're covering gravity in science next week. Could you make some pages for their communication book? Now, that might sound brilliant that they're so on board, but actually, how frequently is a child going to use the pages on gravity? They might use them uh, for that term alone and then never use them again. So it might be more useful that in a science lesson, the child focuses on words around describing. So maybe they have a section in their book with describing words and there might be words like light and heavy, float, sink. Uh, and again, that's teaching them functional vocabulary that they can use um, in lots of different settings and in lots of different conversations. So in the long term, that's going to be much more useful than uh, having an additional science page. Uh, it might be useful to consult with an occupational therapist if the child doesn't access by finger pointing alone. So if they're fist pointing or eye pointing, uh, just to consider access and making it easy for the child. These are just a few little questions that I generally ask myself to help me think about what style of communication book I might use. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if the child isn't initiating communication and maybe isn't appearing that interested in joint activities and joint attention, we might start with something like PEX before using a communication book. So PEX is a picture exchange communication system. And again, PEX can be a great standalone communication form for some children. Um, so yes, if the child isn't really initiating that communication, that might be a starting point. If the child is beginning to show joint attention in highly motivational activities, I find POD can be really useful as you can use some of those activity play based pages. Um, you can flick back and forwards and provide comments on the activity as you're engaging in the activity. Uh, POD can also be useful as a child is just beginning to show an interest in communication as there's so much modelling involved that you're really providing lots of input to support the child in using that approach. If the child's language skills are developing and they're starting to combine symbols, you might think about more of a core word format. 
So every communication book, it's important to have access to some core words, um, but some like, for example, the ACE Centre templates really had that very consistent approach where you have the core words on the same page in the same layout. Um, and that's going to be so beneficial for a child who's going to begin to combine symbols to form sentences. And ultimately, we are thinking about this child being a really competent communicator. So we should always be thinking ahead. You might make a really simplistic communication book to begin with, but actually you might then have to review it in a month. So always kind of think about the next step as well. Making a communication book is really time consuming and we need to think, how is a child going to progress through this? What's the ultimate goal? Um, because we are expecting the child, we're going in with those high expectations that the child will develop those communication skills with our support and our models. Uh, if the child's familiar with a, a system already, um, so a certain vocabulary package, as I mentioned before, you might consider um, making a bespoke communication book around that system that they're already familiar with. So let's talk about the actual nitty gritty of making a communication book and some of the things that you'll need. Some of this might be very obvious. Um, so to begin with, you're definitely going to need some symbol based software. Um, if this is a new term to you and you're not familiar with symbols, um, we ran a little webinar back in July, uh, which looked at the different types of symbol based software available um, and we discussed the different features of each. So if that's something you're interested in, um, have a little look on our website and our YouTube channel. I think Eric is going to provide you with a link tomorrow uh, and you can explore that a little bit further. Some of the main types of symbol based software that we use in the UK are Boardmaker. So you can have Boardmaker online, which I mentioned earlier is switching to Boardmaker 7. Uh, there's Widget Online, which also has Communicate in Print, which is from the same family of software. And then there's Matrix Maker. Uh, at the end of today's webinar, I'm also going to provide you with some links for free trials um, so you can explore some of these types of software a little bit further. Uh, so making a communication book, you're going to need lots of paper, um, a printer, obviously. I would suggest you need a colour printer. Um, most communication books have some colour coded format, so the vocabulary might be um, coded using colour. Uh, the pages might be coded in colour, uh, but also it's easier visually for the child to differentiate and discriminate between symbols if, if they're coloured and popping off the page a little bit. Laminating pouches, uh, make sure you've got lots. There's nothing more frustrating than getting halfway through the process of making a communication and then running out of laminating pouches. So make sure you have plenty. Uh, scissors, obviously, in case you need to cut tabs for something like a pod book, those tabs at the bottom, um, it's really important to uh, have it as accessible as possible. And then finally, a file or a binder. So you will have spent lots and lots of time making the book, so it's really important to keep it safe. Um, something like a, a nice sturdy binder is going to ensure that those pages within the communication book aren't dog-eared and um, grubby, as it's something that we hope the child will carry with them and use for some time. So a, a good website to, to look for binders is called Ability World. Uh, this is an example of one of the binders here, and it's also got a nice sort of uh, strap around it so you can carry it around your neck or on your shoulder, and that way you're constantly modelling communication throughout the day. Uh, the nice thing about the binders on Ability World is that they're generally soft backed, so you can flip through the pages more easily. Uh, so when you're using a communication book, you're often flipping to and from different pages. So it's much easier to do that with a soft back binder like the ones on Ability World. They are a little bit pricier than a normal file, but we generally find they're quite a good investment. And I usually encourage the child to choose the binder that they want so that they feel involved in the process. So they might choose the colour or the style. Uh, so they have a little bit of ownership over it as well. The other thing I should mention, you will need lots and lots of time as making a communication book is a really time consuming process. So please block in some time uh, from making that book. And then generally you will need to edit the book uh, as time goes on. So, for example, today I spent most of the morning um, updating communication books for some of the students who I work with. 
So for example, the people pages were outdated as they're now in new classes with new children, new teachers. Uh, so I had to update those pages. Uh, so I've mentioned Symbol software and there was templates available on most of the Symbol software that you can access to help you to make a communication book. So you can edit pre-made books or you can use blank templates. Um, editing a pre-made book is quite a quick way to do it, uh, but I would suggest that you really explore some of the different pre-made books before you select one. So for example, at the bottom of the screen here, you can see this is a screenshot from Boardmaker Online. So I've typed into the search bar core words, core word book, and then I've had pages and pages of pre-made books that people have saved and shared uh, so that other people can then use them and edit them. So I can then look through some of these books and think, mm, would that be useful for the child that I'm working with? And I can edit it. I might change the layout. I might reduce the number of symbols on the page. I might personalize it, add in a few photographs, uh, add in favorite activities. Um, but that's a quick and easy way to make a communication book. Most software also has blank templates for different styles of communication books. Um, if you're using a totally blank template that doesn't have any vocabulary on it, I would suggest that you look at other communication books so that you consider how that vocabulary is going to be laid out and so you can consider that navigation process as well. So that index page is going to take you to all the different pages. How is that going to look? How are you going to lay it out? Um, so you might want to explore looking at pre-made communication books before you use a blank template. Again, as I mentioned earlier, for ready-made templates, um, the ACE Centre also has a developing and using a communication book uh, where you can open their templates in different software. Let's have a quick look at some alternative access methods. Uh, so, so far we've really explored looking at uh, direct access to finger pointing with a communication book, but many of the students who I work with don't have those fine motor skills, so they need an alternative access method. Uh, and I thought I'd show you some examples. So uh, in the picture here, you can see the first one is fist pointing. So you might use this with a student who um, has control of their hand, but can't isolate a finger. So they might use their fist to point to symbols. Um, you can see here the symbols are nicely spread out so that that makes it more accessible. If they were using a standard page format, it would be difficult for them to uh, isolate the symbol that they want and they might accidentally um, get caught between two symbols. So it's, it's thinking about the spacing of the symbols to make it really accessible. And then eye pointing can be a really uh, useful method for a child who struggles to use their hand or their finger um, and struggles with those fine motor skills. So uh, eye pointing involves looking at the symbol um, and these are two different formats that I thought I would show you. The first is one that I've made with just laminating pouches. So you can see I have printed the symbols and I have just stuck them in the corners of the laminating pouch. And then when I hold the page up for the child, there's like a window in the middle so I can see where they're looking. Um, I've tried to replicate a simple pod book here. So for example, if they looked at the feelings symbol in the bottom, uh, I would see that says page six. So I would then flip to page six and hold up the feelings page. If they looked at happy, I would point to it and say, oh, you're feeling happy today. Uh, so I'm giving the verbal feedback as well when they look at the symbol uh, so that I'm reinforcing that choice. Uh, this uh, layout called Look to Talk, and this is available on the ACE Centre website again, uh, which is such a useful resource. Um, so this can be purchased. And again, this is an example of how you might build on eye pointing, uh, as this is a really clever method. So you can see the symbols are arranged in blocks where there are two symbols on this page in each block, and then there are colors in the corner. So it's like a color coding system. So for example, if the child wanted to tell me that they needed help, they might look towards this block in the corner. So initially I might think, are they asking for help or are they asking for more? Then they would look towards the yellow semicircle, and then I would know that they're asking for help. So there's two uh, eye pointing 
steps involved in that process. They look at the block and then they look at the colour. And that can make a really effective uh, means of communication for someone who has eye points. You can gradually develop how many symbols are in a block. You can have lots of different colours uh, so that they can have uh, more choices, but it can be a really good method to grow with. I thought we'd have a quick look at how you might support visual impairment with communication books as well. Uh, so you might think if you're working with a student with a visual impairment that a communication book is out of the question, but there are lots of different ways that you can adapt that book to meet their needs. Uh, so you can use high contrast symbols um, and these are available on Boardmaker, the example that I'm showing you here. So you can see with this, the high contrast symbol, the symbol is on a black background and then a really bright colour is used uh, to contrast against that. We generally print these on cream paper as for visual impairment, black on cream is uh, one of the best contrasts. Uh, if you're making a high contrast communication book, I would suggest that you have a little look at the child's visual impairment assessment if they've had one or uh, consult with someone who is an expert around VI so that they can give you a little bit more information. And then this is an auditory scanning communication book, um, which is a really, really effective uh, adaptation of a communication book. Um, so this again is an adapted pod book. And the idea of this is that you would read out a consistent list and the child would then indicate when you get to the choice that they want. So you can see on this page it says something's wrong. So the adult might slowly read out the list. So it might be, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm uncomfortable. And then the child would indicate when they hear the option that they want. So that might be with their yes response. For example, I work with a young girl who uses an auditory scanning book and she will provide us with a slow blink when she hears the option that she wants. Um, so I think there might also be templates for examples of these on the ICE Centre um, website. If not, um, please do get in touch if you're interested in auditory scanning books, as I've made quite a few and I'm happy to provide you with support around that as well. As I mentioned, these are some free trials. So if symbol based software is completely new to you and you want to explore using some of the most commonly uh, used software in UK schools. Uh, these are some trials and you can have a play around with them. If you get a month, you might even be able to make a communication book within that period of time uh, or even print out a few sample pages that you could try uh, with a child who you're working with before you commit to making that book. So we've got Boardmaker, have a one month free trial. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, because they're switching to Boardmaker 7, uh, do explore that a little further. Line, have a 21 day free trial. Communicate in print is from the same family as Widget and they also have a 21 free day trial from the same website. And then finally, Matrix Maker uh, is available on Inclusive and they have a two week free trial. So Matrix Maker doesn't have pre-made communication books, but it does have templates for communication books um, and it does have a really nice auditory scanning uh, template, which you might find useful if that's something you're going to explore. Uh, just finishing up, I thought I would give you our Twitter links in case you want to follow us. Uh, so we've got Erica who introduced me today, Erica Smith 2019. And then there's me at Older, our head teacher at Neil Oldham. And then we've got our school at High Furlong. So we tend to tweet about communication and assistive technology um, and we like to connect with other people. So please feel free to follow us. Uh, and I think all that's left is, does anybody have any questions? I, don't, I think we're all out of questions, Sarah. That was brilliant. Thank you. I was uh, having a little chuckle when I heard you talking about POD because we know that they are a, a real labour and very time consuming. But I think the motivation is there because we've seen just how much our students love them. Yes, yes, really time consuming, but definitely worth it. And Tina's saying thanks, great stuff. Oh, <laughs> Tina, that's good. Tina's been tweeting during the webinar. It's been really good. So uh, thank, thank you, you, Tina. Thanks for that, Tina. And hopefully, I mean, Tina knows much more about the new board maker that's coming up. 
So uh, if anybody wants to follow Tina Voise on um, Twitter, she'll provide you with lots more information around Boardmaker. And I will email the link to everybody to our YouTube channel so that they can look at the um, webinar that you talked about previously that we did in July. Brilliant. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending today. Thank you very much.